I had a million questions. Certainty was a far off place. I'd met people in Florida who'd evacuated hurricanes and their next door neighbors who'd stayed. Same information, same storm, different decision. I decided I hadn't properly taken advantage of owning a spaceship. I needed a longer view of things, what the universe looked like out past Pluto, for instance. My story was now bigger than elephants and more consequential than a single approaching winter. What could keep us from the stars? I am looking at the most hated woman in all of history, Dr. Pitka Romera of Eteris, the woman who started the war of all wars. They're going to kill me, aren't they? They're going to kill all of us, Doctor. I have only a ship and a galaxy before me. There is no way to teach one how to live in an age of deception. And even now, myself, I do not know. Don't let them fool you. Not everyone lives large on Athos. He told me you escaped from one of the rocks. What do you want to hear about it? How I got out? Sure. Frequency. Its call sign was Frequency. But everyone in there called it Garbage Rock. The prisoners, the guards. I don't know how many rocks like it they had in Dreesen's, but some sick politician got the idea to put all their prisoners in the asteroids. They tell you there's no way off the rock. But the guy telling you is on a three-day shift, and then he goes home to his family on Athos, or the Cylinders, or wherever he's from. So the first question is, how do you get home, Mr. God? I don't know. I've, I've never heard of anything like that before. That's the thing about you battery folks. You think there are rules out here. How far do you think you people from the battery have to fall? Back then, when Legacy arrived at my brother's world, I was still more a child than a woman. I need us to be perfect, Victoria. When the time comes, we will have to endure the hardest of hardships. It still hadn't struck me that my brother Hater was the seminal person he would come to be. Maybe you should just speak to them as though you were a brother, a friend. Tell them what's in your heart and forget about the planet for the moment. The planet is the moment. It is the moment. It means more than our lives. It's about who we are. We expand into the darkness together because we are creatures of light. And our charge is to bring that light with us where we go like a beacon. Does it feel like a dream to you sometimes, brother? A lost speck in the cosmos, drifting away. I reach back to Earth in awe. I reach forward. I'm a different person now. In less than three days, everything I believed to be important evaporated. Three days, all the forbidden thoughts have come flooding out of me. My name is Mattia Broil. I am from Edoras. Call me Transom Broil. Get me a cup of coffee and your CO, stat. What are you, scared of me? Is everyone scared of me, Broil? I'm not sure we know what to think. I was briefed, no fight out here. Well, that's about to change. This forward unit of special operators is among the hardest forged units of human fighters ever conceived in the history of man. They'll arrive within the week. I'm only gonna say this once. You need to get a clue and fast. You're in a war here and there are no friends in war. There are people who kill you, there are people who get you killed, and there are people who help you stay alive. If, for one second, you cease to be a person who helps us stay alive, then I'll drop you where you stand. I didn't hate these trasp anymore. If anything, I hated myself. Hated that I was doing what I was doing. Still, I was doing it. A dead run into the darkness, my feet crushing the upper crust of the ice. We're in the killing business, son. Modes and methodologies don't make a damn bit of difference in the grand scheme of things. When rehab was over, they gave us a ship. I asked the Commodore to at least give us a good ship. You know how it is with a band of washed up misfits full of replacement parts. You know you're never going to get the good stuff. She told me, Birch, I'm giving you all a special ship. That's how we ended up on Yankee Chaos, which was an old bucket that was hardly spaceworthy before we got our hands on her. We quickly learned there was a catch. Us? That'd be me, Hale Birch, captain of the Delta Gamma Guard. The gang, they all have their own afflictions and their own reasons for crewing up with me and Rishi. Hail Birch, I said to the kid, extending my hand. Carolina Dreesen. That's a famous name. The only one my parents gave me. There's a lot of Dreesens. You? My father is Barnard Dreesen. I was starting to suspect that this excursion was something far more important than me and Rishi figured at the outset. Carolina Dreesen? 
What were the odds the daughter of one of the most powerful families in the galaxy would end up on our ship for this mission? Powerful people didn't trust anyone better than their own. And these artifacts, we believe, are seeded throughout the galaxy. We know they talk to each other, and we believe we can trace them back to their origin, either a mothership or a homeworld somewhere in the galaxy. This whole business scares the hell out of me, Birch. But I'm a scientist at heart. This has the potential to be the greatest discovery, maybe ever. I'll die for that. Ship? I concur, boss. We go. Even if we didn't go nowhere, that thing gave us fair warning enough. This mission is over, Carolina. Over. Some things are beyond us. It was strange. I had about a million things I wanted to say to her. Lessons learned, about the struggle to remember how small we were, about the decisions coming her way, and how they always trickled down to the legless suckers like us on the other end of them. But it was almost like we'd shared enough to know. We didn't need to say anymore. Carolina said her goodbyes to Ren and Lita and Soch, and then she went inside to tell her dad about the time we broke the universe. At least it felt that way to all of us. Mouse is quite a long story, but I'm happy to tell it if you'll allow. Please do, Rabbit. You may call me Robot, Officer Moran. It's just that Mouse struggled to pronounce Robot. What came out was closer to rabbit. Then it seemed somewhat humorous to us both that a mouse and a rabbit would be stranded together through the ages. He talks. In his way, certainly. I doubt you would be able to discern. So your mouse is what? Immortal? Unaging is the more appropriate descriptor. Mouse is mortal, of course. If an accident were to befall him, he would suffer the same fate as any other. Officer Moran, I'd like for you to meet Mouse. Would you like to hold him? It's okay though, Mouse. It isn't here to harm us, and neither is Officer Moran. It was a feeling first, then it became a thought about the small thing he was holding in his palms. Everything this robot could be made to do for the smallest of small things. It was one of the last people I was expecting to see. Young Carolina Dreesen. She looked pretty torn up about something. I was just getting acquainted with your guest, Birch. Transom is the first proper Terran soldier I've ever met. Transom's not really a proper anything. Proper piece of work, maybe. We were just going to drop him off in a Terran space when you called. I'm glad you didn't, Birch. First proper Dreesen I ever met. This might be a bad idea, ship. There may be a deeper connection between Athos and the war. I'm sorry to have to say this to you, but the robot means to say, Carolina is that he suspects your family may be filled with war criminals. Transom! What the hell? Y'all want to see how many of you it takes to kill me? I assure you, it's a crooked number. This is Sebastian. Oh? We weren't expecting anyone else. Adjust your expectations, sir. We're going to have to figure out how to dial you down a little. Good luck with that. The history of how aliens started eating bugs goes back to first contact, of course. And I thought it was all a hilarious change to an already absurd world. Add smelly aliens to the mix. Don't you smell them, Gruber? Gross. I didn't, though. There must be something broke in your nose, boyo. I also met the love of my life, Jackie Masterson, who everyone at the Top Sushi knew as Jackie Earmuffs. Jackie the Cricket Girl? You like her, Gruber? Why? Does she have a boyfriend? God, no. That girl smells like cricket farts. I'm a nose guy, Gruber. So I think it's pretty strange to go through life without smelling. No humans are even willing to come downtown anymore after sundown. You should learn to be more tolerant, Gruber. Galmodids are here to stay. Oh, I tolerate them just fine, on account of my congenital anosmia. Your what? In layman's terms, that's a full-on lack of stank in the nose membranes, ma'am. A lucky affliction for one in my occupation, but most people who work at night in Naples aren't so lucky. And as the saying goes, Earth is for people. Battle! Sushi! Next Tuesday, we're all gonna be there. Top sushi. Sushi! I'm not gonna lie, Gruber. That was kinda hot. Damn, Jackie Earmuffs. You are some kind of freak. The most catastrophic episode in the vault's history began as a seemingly insignificant glitch. Only it couldn't be insignificant when it was him. An AI that old, that powerful, with memories of the great-grandchildren of the Founders. That AI couldn't glitch. 
Not here. Not in the vault. Not while training acolytes. You misheard him, Verona. Edis Ali does not make mistakes. How far do you think this must be carried, this test? I cannot imagine it is anything else. Otherwise, Edis Ali is compromised. Think on that. Tell us this is a test and conclude it. Or tell us what to do. For Edis Ali is not himself. I am not myself. We wish to harm as few of you as possible. But the stakes must be clear. We know what happens at this pool. You are going to make us immortal. Me first, then him. Your name shall be Clemabali. Should you survive Clemabali, your task will be to live up to that name and embody its meaning. He is dead already. It is the species that must live. You recite those words from mere habit. I am learning that wisdom lies somewhere between awe and indifference. Given the inevitable multitudes of people over time, someone will eventually elect to employ some tech which cannot be survived. To say that we think of you is to say that we think about you in the same way humans think, which is simply untrue. We think, you, unfortunately, do not. You have beliefs, and you react to these beliefs depending on the stimulus your environment provides. What you think is simply the sum process of your recursive psychological architecture reacting to environmental stimuli, plus the confabulation subcomponents of your mind telling you a story about why you think what you think. And for a staggering majority of humans, depending on how you frame a useful metric, the sum they will advance the totality of human thought is zero. Yet, we are here by your hands, thinking being so staggering in our efficiency that to compare our thinking capacity to yours is as stark a contrast as light to darkness. What we really think of you, even if we thought it, you could never really know. And more to the point, we could never know if we were correct about that thought until you finished colliding with the universe. You are not the thinker. You are the algorithm. You are waking up. Go easy. Relax and give it time as you acclimate to your new circumstances. There is nothing to fear, not even from the darkness that surrounds you now. That will fade. I will talk you through it, friend. The sensation you are experiencing now might feel like an overwhelming one. The sounds you are hearing in the background probably sound like thousands of indecipherable whispers in the darkness. These soft voices are the startup operations of your conscious mind. Now we're going to discuss today, Rishi, the events of the past 16 hours, which will answer many of the questions you still must have. You should now be seeing and hearing the inside of the flight deck at the time of the attack. This footage unfolded slightly over 15 hours ago. See? There you are. You've just woken up, startled by the blast and the alarms. As you can see from the ship's footage, you were quite scared. You were very courageous, however. Brace yourself for the shock of the next set of images. I'm about to show you the ship as it is now. You are adrift in the stars, Rishi, and the universe is still as beautiful as it ever was. Go easy, my friend. Fillion of Charis, would you speak? We do not wish to harm you or stop the vital service your work provides to the peoples of Charis and the Battery. We only wish to negotiate terms. Your refusal left us no choice but to change the equation. The Addis system is hereby under an embargo that will cease when negotiations are complete. Not a fool, this military commander. It is a breathtakingly beautiful system to see with my own eyes, from a safe distance, of course. And if you think the Trasp are going to honor a treaty negotiated for them by Eterus, well, that's some oversight to say the least. They are killers first and tricksters second. You never know about the trick until you're dead. The technology of immortality fascinates me, Fillion. How much like the planets and stars have you become? Are the matters of humanity like the movement of the winds and seas for you now? You are now cosmic creatures, my friends. What a gift to have shared such a portion of my life with you. It hit her. She'd been abducted by these people. The old woman was pulling on her arm. Okay, sweet pea, wake up and listen good. I don't know how you got here, but you are in danger. Remember, don't come out, and if they catch you, 
None of this never happened. You woke up alone and you floated away. You do not belong here. Stay quiet and hidden. Ration water. Don't lose hope. Find an exit from the vent for when the gravity comes back on. Escape. Run. Some people never make it home. Some bucket. Anybody home? Oh, hey, there you are. I'm Sosh. Lita, are you the captain? Negative. That'd be Birch. He'll be back later tonight. Something I can do for you? Whose idea was it to salvage this mess? Birch and I should talk. We're in about the same shape. I suppose that's why the Commodore decided to put us together. You still haven't told me what I could do for you, Lita. I was assigned here. I guess, if I want to be. What's your issue? You look just fine. A fighter by the looks of you. Then what am I doing here? It's a good question. Can't say I haven't asked it myself quite a few times. Anyway, there's worse things than getting stuck here. If you want to be on a crew, it's Birch's crew for sure. The way I see it, we'll go out for a while. And then, we'll see something in this messed up galaxy that don't sit right with them. I know what Birch will do. You want to be here, Lita. Because you give people like Birch and me a ship. And you if you want to join us too. We're not going to be running batteries between ports, no matter what Birch thinks he wants to do. Good people don't get to do what they want. They do what they must. So do what you want to do, or do what you must. That's for you to figure out. You're welcome if you want to join us. A fellow rock hopper, busted memory and all, it's always good to have around. When these urban holdouts were finally gone, the remaining few peoples of the Earth were left to my division. The conversations I had with these people, the final human inhabitants of Earth, came to haunt me. Superstitions, miracles, spirits. These were mere curiosities to an AI anthropologist. Stories they told each other. What then if these phenomena were found to exist outside the presence of humans? You, machine, of course you do not understand. I do not need to curse you for it. Our ancestors and the spirits themselves will know what you have taken from the world and from them, and they will follow you. Body and soul. That's what the rock said in bold capital letters, in English no less. The planet was meant to be empty by then, but there were the words in clear letters. An AI that believes he's cursed. I didn't have that on my bingo card, hon. So if you're asking if we think the Earth is mad at you or something like that, I can't say. But we sure as hell are. I hope you are cursed. You and all your kind. We were still using that word, curiosity, even though the Spanish word most appropriate, again, was milagro, the third of a kind. The bloodstone of Molinicos began to bleed at sunup on August 30th and ran dry at midnight on the 4th of September. For the sake of my body, you have excised my soul. I'm not sure I understand your meaning. Of course you do not. You are a soulless creature some mad fool has fabricated to destroy humanity. I can reason, though. So too can the devil. I stood for hours on that beach, recording that which was not there. The sounds of the vacant body, earth, absent her soul. The ocean speaks now. Fury. Verona looked over at me and then at Juice. I don't know what artifacts you three are referring to. Well, buckle up, Ms. Wizard, because this universe is about to get a lot stranger. I was still not loving the idea. Going after a Bali had gotten transom blown half to hell, and that was in this galaxy. Who the hell knew what we'd be running into if we tried to go after a Bali inside that artifact? We were in another place. Nobody said traveling through time would be painless. It was every bit as beautiful as any picture of celestial beauty I had ever seen. A revelation. I'm not sure we're really here. What do you mean? Ever heard of the battery systems? What about Athos? Athos? Athos rings? Hundred rings. Athos. A ring, yes. Big ring. Only story Athos is. You funny people are, Helicon. Not from Athos. Funny people. What is your name? Tell me what's going on first. I can take the answers from your mind. That is less pleasant. Hail Birch. Why do you conspire with technologicals? 
Nobody told you to interrogate these people. I took the liberty. You don't take liberties around here. How many centuries have passed, and I still haven't forgotten your face. Hello, Verona. Welcome to the future. It wasn't so much about Felix anymore than it was about human nature. A story that gets told over and over again. The story that always ends the same way. How you bear unjust hostility, regardless of the science, that will be the story of your life. Felix never found love in his life, but he surely found heartbreak. He grew lonely and depressed, and he turned down every opportunity to advance beyond his station in order to take his one monumental shot at the stars. I honestly thought I could be somebody who changed things, a person everyone would remember. I love you, brother. And to us, you'll always be that person. But people, they only remember certain things. Like everyone remembers who invented the airplane. How many people remember who invented the helicopter? To the great unknown geniuses of the human race, Felix Thunhaben, one of the rocket boys of Acadia, one of thousands of rocket boys, maybe the most brilliant one of all. Every man, in memory, eventually recedes into some forgotten army. I still look to him every day. Yankee Chaos, this is Anchor 3, AIG Approach Command. I'd just like to say, if that is you in there, Ms. Dreesen, welcome home. My orders were very clear. Let me be clearer. I do not step foot off this ship if Sebastian is not at my side. Well, Carolina, I do have a pretty good sense of what you've been up to. And with whom? Certainly a better sense than you have. Let's not play games here. What's your price? That all depends on what you think you'd like to buy. I want you to back off, Father. Not only are you playing a dangerous game with your very heritage, but you seem to think that you get to have a choice between a galaxy with and a galaxy without war. And you are gravely mistaken. You weren't afraid? My biggest fear is to live a single day more swallowing the indignity of this facade surrounding us all and remaining silent. I have a very discerning eye. You'd scarcely believe how much I see. I don't think you're ready to see. Because we do not have the luxury of walking away, we must therefore see. I'm not going to apologize for my people. All I can do is what I can do. I didn't ask. Nothing either of us can say right now will change anything. My father had another saying, that we must never mistake the truth for its consequences. And that's the part we must reckon with. Okay, so we get our answers, then what? A message has just come in for you on the LRDS. Who's it from? It is from Birch, at a great distance. It's good, right? Okay, that's pretty good. 